he had all of his followers, and they were scared for his life because even though they had in the diet, they told him he would have safe journey back to his hometown. Nobody believed that. They all thought that he would die. So he was kidnapped by his own people and held away so that nobody knew where he was just to keep him safe. Now, as I think it was in chapter 7, we read that that was part of God's plan. Because what was he doing while he was in hiding? We're going backwards now. What was he doing while he was in hiding? What was he doing while he was in hiding? He was locked up pretty much. Was he writing? He was writing. He was writing. He was still getting it out by paper. And so people thought he was dead. They didn't know what was going on, but yet these writings kept showing up. So they knew, the people that were looking for him knew he's alive, but nobody knew where he was. Actually, some of his writings actually got to his window. Yes, yes. And without that, now God also, I want to see how deep he read into this. It's also said in the book, there was a reason why God had him in that um, I don't want to say prison, but locked up like that. There was a reason that God said that he didn't have him still go back to the people and still be a public figure. He had a time where he had to be you know, mm -hmm. on his own. What was the reason? Can I tell me what the reason God said this was part of the reason why he needed to do it? Do you remember that? Writing, connection with God, this is one big thing. <coughs> He had a lot of followers after that. He had a lot of followers. A lot of people were following him. And what the great controversy says is that had he been able to go back with all of those followers, his pride would have increased. His pride would have increased. Okay? And she says that many people at that stage when they get those followers, pride takes over and it affects the ministry. And so instead of him getting out there and getting the big head because now all of these people are following him, God put him in seclusion so that that would not affect his ministry. There's a purpose and a plan for everything that God allows to happen. That's why we cannot complain. No matter where we end up, God has a purpose for it. And I can see Martin Luther now saying, Lord, please, I followed you this far. I stood in front of the diet and the council, and I didn't sell you out. What makes you think I'm going to get the big head when I get home? I'm, I'm pretty sure I can hear him arguing that point. But God knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows us better than ourselves. And he says, I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to let you fall like that. I know your weaknesses. So I'm going to put you in seclusion so that you don't get the big head. There was also something that else that needed to be accomplished. But let's go here on page 188, chapter 10. Luther's mysterious disappearance excited consternation throughout all Germany. Inquiries concerning him were heard everywhere. The wildest rumors were circulated, and many believed that they had that he had been murdered. There was a great lamentation, not only by his avowed friends, but by thousands who had not openly taken their stand with the Reformation. Many bowed themselves with a solemn oath to avenge his death. Now, is this something similar that happened in the New Testament? Can this can, can we think of another story that kind of went along with something that we just read right here? Jesus, maybe? Yeah. Did Jesus have followers? Yes. Were they strong after him? Yes. And what happened when he died? They, uh, what did they do? Well, initially, they kind of scattered. They, scattered. They, they scattered. Yep. They were scared. They were worried what happened. Our leader's gone. Mm -hmm. Okay? All of those feelings came to his followers as well. Because why? The head of the movement now seemed to be taken up. And like Peter, okay. he said, I will never, ever leave you, never forsake you. And but he didn't know. He was, he was strong, but he wasn't as strong as he thought he was. Mm -hmm. Because when they took Jesus,
yet Peter came right back in the next chapter, in the next book, and was the leader and brought them all together. And it makes me feel so good to know that this guy who fell, who knew he fell, knew he looked at Christ in his eyes and denied him, had enough courage in himself to say, you know what, if Jesus can forgive me, I can forgive myself, and we have work to do. He knew that his fellow brothers and sisters were going to talk about him because he, he was denied Christ. But then I think about how Peter had to think of what Jesus told him face to face. Remember the conversation Jesus had with Peter before all this happened? What did he tell him? He told him that. And he, he wasn't listening to him then, was he? Because you would think that would have come back to him or
anyone who plays, water turns to blood. Right. You get him off. But, and everything in the sea dies. That's what the Bible says. Now I want you to imagine something. Imagine everything in the sea dying. That stinks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alright, I want you to imagine that. The stink, the stench mm -hmm. that happens that comes from that. The trades. A lot of food and groceries are not flown to us. They're, they're boats. They're shipped. They're shipped to us. Also coming to the world right. is water. Exactly. Mm -hmm. When those lanes are closed up and food can't get to us, it is said that grocery stores have about three to four days worth of supplies. Mm -hmm. Now, when we know the supply has been cut off, all right, when the supply has been cut off, and there's only three to four days left in grocery stores of food. What chance do you think you have to go in there and stack up and load yourself up with food? Mm -hmm. And this is the reality. What God knows is coming and we're playing games. Because when this time comes, if you think you're going to be able to go to your local Aldi's and load up and, and sit this one out, it doesn't happen. It won't happen like that. We will at that point have to be prepared. Number one, with what we have, we'll have to be prepared to go out. If we can't go a day without eating food now, how are we going to go weeks? <laughs> no, how, how is that going to happen? If we, if we won't worship God because it's too cold or too hot, okay, or it's too long and we need to get home and get some sleep, what are we going to do when we have no heat, when we're running from place to place, when we don't know where we're going to worship? Where the call might come out, hey, we're going to be over here this week, we'll be over there. I mean, these are real things that God right. is trying to prepare his people for. Right. And instead, we're being distracted by other things that are not preparing us for what we really need to be prepared for. Right. You know, right. Well, go ahead. I heard that last night about fasting. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know we were fasting until I was here last week. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I was sorry about that. But then I was in the last No, it's not good. When I go on a fast, when I go on a fast, 
for me to say, okay, I'm going to force myself to go to bed at 10, 11 o'clock at night, which for y'all is probably late, for me is early. Um, is that really a fast? Like, I, I should be doing that either way. Anyway, you know? Yeah, you, 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 you see my point? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not saying it's bad, sis. I'm just saying that if I'm doing a fast, it should be above and beyond what I'm doing. Like, if I'm doing, let's, I use the sugar. I am, I've tried not to use the sugar. You guys, we shouldn't be living off the of sugar anyway. Right. No. We really, we really shouldn't be living off the of sugar anyway. It's not That's good right. for us, you know. <laughs> so if we, if, if part of our diet is three Snickers bars a day and some donuts, <laughs> and we want to fast to God and just say, hey, I'm not going to eat those three donuts a day. Well, that's something we shouldn't be doing anyway. <laughs> I mean, how much really of a fast is it when it's just something we shouldn't be doing anyway? What, what it makes me think when I call it a fast is that, okay, I'm going to fast for a short period of time, and I'm going to jump back on that three Snickers bar a day diet. <laughs> no, that's, that's a diet that should be long term. That's not a fast. A fast should be from something that you're doing that is normal, that you are stopping from, and that it is a sacrifice. If you want to live Christian life, you wouldn't be eating that anyway. That's a part of a regular diet that we should implement as Christians. Can I say true that, but fasting on something like that, I mean, you should take it as it, it's, it's helpful to you um, after that. After you fasted for no sugar for that period of time, it, it, it's helpful to people who can't. You know what I'm saying? So to put them on. Start. Exactly. You. you know what I'm saying? It's like a stepping stone. So after you did fast for that week, you realize, okay, it really wasn't that bad. Now you're not going to indulge in so much sugar at this time like you were before. You know what I'm saying? You learn, you know what I'm saying, to, I mean, that like you can live without it like a You know, it's an experience, you know, that you can endure. It's, it's worth doing. That's just all I'm trying to say. It's no, a stepping, it's I, a stepping and, and by, no, by no means am I saying that that is not a good fast or anything. What I'm saying is that a fast should be sad. It should be sacrificial. If I listen to hip hop and it's cursing every other word, okay? And that's just, just what I listen to. I'm not saying I do, but if I did, and I'm having a fast, my fast shouldn't be that I'm not going to listen to hip hop or curse words. I should be listening to hip hop or curse words in the first place. You know what I'm saying? But a fast can be, you know what? I'm not going to listen to anything for a week. You know, I love TV. Maybe I don't watch TV at all. Because, and that's a sacrifice. That's a, a sacrifice. Um, again, Christ, if we follow his example, was a food fast. Because why? He used the words com constantly. Man shall not live. Now this is a good text. When you get hungry, you're doing a food fast. Whew! I know when I came out of the world and I was coming back into the church and I was on fire, much stronger than I am now. I have to be honest. I was so, so on fire do anything. I said, Lord, I can do anything. Holy Spirit's in me. I got this. I'm going to fast seven days off the top. And the real fast, I'm not going to eat food. I'm just drinking water. That's it. I think I did it. I don't know how I made it out of it because I was half dead. Okay? And then I realized that seven day fast, now I'm not, yeah, that was too much. And then, then I got down to two, three days and 